In this lecture, we're going to look at a technique for filtering signals that introduces zero phase. Now, if we introduce zero phase when we implement our filter, that's going to result in no phase distortion whatsoever. Not even the time delay that happens when we get linear phase filtering. However, this results in a non-causal filter. And the only way to do such zero phase filtering is if you have stored data and you can post process it. If the data is being collected in real time and you want to filter it while it's being collected, then it's impossible to do this zero phase filtering. And the best one can do is linear phase. Now, one thing that happens when you implement a non causal filter is that any transients in the signal get blurred both forwards and backwards in time. And that's a fact that we'll have to remember if temporal precedence is important. In MATLAB, there's a command called filtfilt that implements this zero phase filtering. And the key step in this zero phase filtering idea is use of the time reversal property of the discrete time Fourier transform. And that states that if a signal x of n has discrete time Fourier transform x of e to the j omega, then a time reversed version of x of n, in other words, x of minus n, has discrete time Fourier transform x complex conjugate of e to the j omega. So replacing n by minus n simply flips the signal, as I've illustrated here where I've shown a signal x of n, and then when we do the time reversal operation, the signal gets reversed or flipped and goes in the opposite direction. So the way the zero phase filtering works is to first we filter the data forwards, and then we do a time reversal, filter the data backwards in time, and then we do another time reversal to, to get the uh, order of the signal correct. We've got a block diagram here where we're showing this sequence of operations required to get zero phase filtering. So we begin by taking our input signal x of n, we filter it with h of e to the j omega to get an output z of n, which is just the convolution of the impulse response with x of n. Then we implement time reversal, so we define w to be z of minus n. We put this time reverse signal back through the same filter to get v of n, which is now the convolution of w of n with h of n. And then we time reverse to get the final output. So we have y of n is equal to v of minus n. And one question that we want to address is what's the overall filter function that's implemented by this sequence of steps? First of all, we know that when we filter x, we're just multiplying by the frequency response of the filter. Then when we do the time reversal to obtain w, that corresponds to taking the complex conjugate of z of e to the j omega, which is just the conjugate of h of e to the j omega times x conjugate of e to the j omega. Next, when we filter w, we multiply by h of e to the j omega to get the magnitude of h of e to the j omega squared times x complex conjugate of e to the j omega. So that's our frequency domain representation for the output here at the V step after the second filter. Then we're going to apply a time reversal property to obtain the final output Y of E to the J omega, which is going to be V complex conjugate of E to the J omega. And replacing V with what we had in the previous step, we see that we end up with the magnitude of h of e to the j omega squared times x of e to the j omega. And this, this results because the magnitude of h of e to the j omega squared is real. So the conjugate does nothing to that. And of course, if it's real and positive, then that implies it's going to give us zero phase. So our effective frequency response is just the magnitude of h of e to the j omega squared, and that function has zero phase. So this procedure, because of the two time reversal steps, you can see that it requires the entire data sequence to be available before beginning. One can't do this on the fly as you're collecting data. So that's one of the key issues with using this approach. It's nice to have zero phase, but it does require the entire input data sequence be available or be stored. 
Secondly, something to keep in mind is that if you have specific filtering constraints, that is specifications on your filter response, then you need to translate those from the overall filter to the actual filter that you're going to be implementing. Remember that the overall filtering characteristics is the magnitude squared of the frequency response of the filter that you implement in those two steps of the process. For example, if you require that the overall system have a 60 dB attenuation in the stop band, in other words, H effective of eta j omega has a gain of negative 60 dB in the stop band, then that implies that we need to design the original filter H of eta j omega that's used in those two steps to have a 30 dB attenuation because when we implement the overall procedure, we use this filter twice, which is going to give us 60 dB attenuation. And the same sort of thing applies to critical frequencies in the passband or passband distortion. If you require that your overall filter only have 1 dB of ripple in the passband, then you're going to have to design your filter that you implement in this process as having one half dB of attenuation because the overall effective filter function is going to have twice the ripple expressed in dB of the original filter. And then finally, this procedure, of course, loses the idea of causality, which is okay, although you should be aware of it in cases where it might matter. So for example, if there's some transient effect that starts at time n naught, we can think of a causal response to such a transient would not be possible to begin until after n naught. But if you take your data and you do this zero-phase filtering strategy, then you're going to start to see the effect of that input or that transition occurring prior to n naught. And just need to be aware of that if it's a case where temporal precedence and order is particularly important. So zero-phase filtering is a useful approach for avoiding phase distortion in cases where we have all the data available and are implementing a filter as a post-processing step.